Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, the Squash Ontario webinar, um, where we are discussing some sports psychology with Marcy Sierra. Uh, my name is Lindsay Yates. I work for Squash Ontario, and we also have Lauren Sackby here um, from Squash Ontario as well. And um, we are lucky to have Marcy Sierra sitting down with us. Marcy is the head squash pro at the Badminton and Racquet Club. She works with athletes of all ages and stages in their game. She is a coach developer with Squash Canada and Squash Ontario, and she's also a certified mental performance consultant. So Marcy today is going to talk to us about helpful information and tools for leaders in an athlete's life to keep them engaged and support them through their sport journey. Uh, so with that, take it away, Marcy. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me, Lauren and Lindsay. Um, so today we're going to talk about this was a, a seminar used for parents and helping them navigate their kids in sport, but we're also going to use this for coaches as well. So um, I think on this conversation, Lauren and Lindsay are going to ask some specific questions to this presentation that will guide us more towards how um, coaches might be able to help um, juniors and their parents, because as we know, parents have a massive role in kids' development. And um, so we'll look at kind of the recreational side of things, and we'll also look at the competitive journey. So uh, let's get going. So the goal of sport um, is a really great tool for character development. So it's a tool that teaches strong values and principles in kids' lives. So it's really important that we wanna keep kids engaged in sport. So character building allows kids to stay in sport because they feel confident about themselves. And so because of that, um, it'll allow kids to feel empowered and they'll be able to make decisions take on challenges and come up with solutions for different situations. Cause technically at the end of the day, sport is coming up with different solutions for different situations that kids get into. So we need to factor in that messages are coming from outside of the sport domain. And, um, parents are a massive. So research talks a lot about how, um, parents' values about sport filter through their thinking when they are in sport. So parents you or coaches, we need you to be really mindful that parents are going to be a massive part of this journey with you as you coach kids. Early teachers are also a big um, influence in that. So if you can think back, I don't know if you guys, if you were to think back of sport, um, or anytime you learn something, can you think of an early teacher that made you kind of more excited about learning? I don't know. Have you guys, if you, can you think about someone? Does anyone pop into your head? Are we yeah. talking teachers or parents? Well, teachers, let's go teachers, a sport teacher, a squash teacher. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I remember like my elementary, like team teachers who taught me how to play like volleyball or whatever. Yeah. So sport. Exactly. So also we have to be mindful of that when we're engaging with kids in squash, that early teachers are really important influencers in building these characters and getting kids excited about learning and not afraid of it and things like that. So at a younger age, we also have to now deal with social media and social media. Unfortunately, we need to kind of get in there in order to help kids much earlier because social media is kind of the end result. So it's always what we see at the end of someone's journey or the good times. So we have to make sure that those impactful messages of social media, because they're now their thing, are kind of, um, I would say, caught between parents and teachers and things like that in order for them to make the bigger picture for, um, for kids in sport. Okay, so as coaches, we have to remember that parents play a big support role in helping their kids move along in sport. So we need to educate them about knowing their values, how they can be active listeners in this process of when their kids start to go through interactions in sport, 
And we also need to teach parents to respect their emotions. Like little people aren't necessarily able to totally deal with their emotions right away. So we, we definitely see a lot of tears and tears are going to happen because people don't know, or young kids don't know how to express their emotions yet. Um, and then parents, another big piece is, is to keep things in perspective and perspective, meaning that you need to do what's right for your kid. You don't necessarily have to keep up with everything that everybody else is doing. So some kids might need more social and some kids may in their sport context and some people may need more intensity early on. But that's a very, very um, fine line, I guess you would say. Um, but that perspective for parents will be a really helpful tool and you will need to influence that. The other piece is, is that everybody keeps it fun. Parents, kids, coaches is going to be a massive piece to keeping kids engaged. Girls, do you have any questions so far? Uh, I think to go back to, um, you know, I guess the, if every kid is so different in what they want, especially when they're competing. Mm hmm um, and I think we're in such a weird sport where it's individual, but not just individual, like spectators are five feet away from you. So, you know, these guys can turn around and lock eyes with their parents every point um, or their coach or whoever's in the crowd, really. So, um, I mean, what would be some tools for or what kind of conversations should coaches have like? I guess it should really happen early on because there's definitely kids who don't, they're not motivated by cheering. And I feel like that's what the misconception is. Everyone is motivated by like having their whole club cheer them on, which that actually puts on so much pressure for some kids. So what kind of conversations could coaches have early on? And that could be relayed to not only that kid's parents, but almost like the parents and the kids from the club. Cause a lot of people look at that as a team, but Absolutely. Um, I think one of the big things that um, that people have to understand is even when kids are really little, if you ask them what's helpful to them, it'll be really, really apparent to you. So sometimes kids don't like noise. Sometimes kids do like the cheering. But one of the big pieces that we always want to teach kids is, is that when they go out there, it's okay to make a mistake and they do not need verification from their parents or their coaches. So when a kid is on court and they lock, have to lock eyes with their parents or their coach, it means that they're looking for reassurance that they did the right thing. And one of the big things I always say to people is whether that's right or wrong is look down, let your kids go through the process on their own. And they don't necessarily need, we want to teach them early on that they don't need us. They are, it's okay if they make mistakes, if they go through that process. And Lauren, I think one of the big things that people really don't ever ask is how can, how can I best support you? Do you like cheering? Do you like all of those things? So further in this conversation, um, we talk a little bit about those conversations and what are those things you need to be reminded of when you're talking about this stuff. So we also need to think that as kids learn, it's very, very bite-sized things that they will take away from each match. And it might be something so minuscule, but everybody wants them to learn so much so quickly. And I think that's part of it. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay, awesome. So when we're thinking about this whole character development, I think people really need to keep this in perspective. We have to keep kids engaged in sport in order for them to stay in it long enough to actually get all of these returns. So the number one thing that has to happen is they have to have fun in some capacity. And squash is actually a tough sport. So therefore, if they're having to do hard work, they, you know, in squash, you have to learn a lot of technique. You have to learn a lot of tactics. There's a lot of different elements to it. But if we lose that fun factor, then it's kind of really hard to push yourself through it. Um. And then the other parts to think about is, is people have to feel like they're developing and they're improving. Okay. And then the other is a sense of belonging and that social aspect. That's huge. Um, you know, in our sport right now, we have, you know, we're really struggling with girls, but girls love in particular at the beginning, 
they love to feel a sense of belonging in that social connection. So, you know, using all girls kinds of things is might be helpful or helping parents get connected to another kid that you see their kid being close with in clinic. Oh, you guys should go have a play date afterwards and go play together um, is, is another big thing. Um, and then the other um, pieces is the role in decision making. So as we were just talking about, you know, when a kid goes on court and they're playing a match, we want them to feel like they have some control over themselves, that they get to make choices and try out their decision making. And it's not about making the right decision all the time. It's about them trying. Does that make sense? It makes them feel confident and build a sense of like more confidence in their ability to make decisions. All right. Well, let's forward. So some of the building blocks we really need to think about as coaches when we are, you know, getting kids engaged in the sport, whether this be at a rec recreational level or a high performance level. So, so one of the big pieces is values and this whole character building. So this could be performance related values. So those things are like um, working hard, um, they're courageous, they um, are willing to put themselves on the line. Um, there's a lot of different, think about variables that deal with performance. And then we also want to think about our moral um, values, because within our groups, we still need people to train with. So we want people who are not necessarily, we want unselfishness, we want humble, we want um, people who are empathetic. So we want to make sure that we're building these characters in order for them to give and take to a group to grow. Um, one of the other ones is a balanced sense of identity. Um, so we want to identify um, that balance in their life. Okay. So that means that they have their squash friends, they have their um, friends outside of um, outside of squash. They have all of these different, you know, factors. And it might be friends that are from a different province. They might be friends from a different city. So it's about having balance in these kinds of things. And so when they are more balanced and maybe they do other sports, particularly at the beginning, you want to identify these balance points because with that, it allows um, a loss or, you know, maybe not success at a point in time to not feel like it takes over their whole life. So again, perspective is another big piece and it's about perspective about themselves, about different situations they're in and about competitions, okay? Um, and the other part is responsibility. And so building blocks of an athlete is that a kid can, can actually communicate how they feel. So if they're having trouble with a coach that we you know, work with them to be able to use their voice instead of their parent coming in and talking for them. And this would be the exact same thing, you know, coaches dealing with kids and having that conversation with the kid and also with the parent. So, okay, I hear you parent, but I'd love for your kid to come talk to me because I'd love to go through it with them and develop that relationship. And I think that's a really big one because we tend to get a lot of those emails through the system all the time saying, can you do this for my kid? And to be able to actually be forward thinking and saying, I want to talk to your kid as well. And I think, you know, letting parents know about your philosophy a little bit early on will be a really helpful piece in that, in that way. Can and I then, jump in? Yeah. Quickly? Um, so you talk about asking for an athlete's feedback, um, or input in decision-making, uh, what if the athlete doesn't know what, what they want or, um, you know, can't, hasn't found their voice yet. Um, can you walk us through some things we can do to eventually develop that or, or what would you do at the outset when that information is not coming? Um, so one of the big pieces is, is I would start asking questions to the athlete. I would ensure that coaches are aware that it is your job to start developing that role. So, um, Hey, I feel like, you know, you've been something seems a little different today. Is everything okay? Can I help you with anything? Um, how would you like me to give you feedback? Um, when you're having trouble, know that you can come and see me and you know we can talk about it either within the group or outside of the group. And sometimes when developing those voices is actually doing it in a group setting so that maybe the kid who will speak up a little bit more will be um, kind of like the leader of, 
of that kind of conversation so that another kid could see that. So a lot of times, you know, if there's something off in a group, I might bring it to the whole group and then have everyone say something around the table. Um, and if it's, if it's tough for people to share their feedback, I might actually give people a piece of paper and they put it in the hat and I have no idea what their response is, but it's about using different tools in order for people to start using their voice. Does that make sense, Lindsay? Absolutely. Uh, and this is my first time hearing about as a coach, your role is building their voice. And that's an interesting concept. For sure. I mean, I think all different coaches have different big philosophies, but I think that the more you can get that back and forth, the easier it will be when someone's dealing with a stressful situation and things like that. So they also then learn those skills of advocating for themselves. No one ever said that a kid can't ask a question to a referee. It's just not asking, it's not saying what they think it should be. So asking a question is a completely different situation or, you know, why was that person chosen over me, you know, all these kinds of things. So I think it's just learning for athletes to feel responsible and they have a little bit of control is a really great tool. Um, and the last one in, in this is, so a building block that I really believe is important is failure and that positive message around it. So, you know, one of the things that I always have fun with is, you know, in a group of kids who tries really hard when they're starting and they miss the ball. Well, I will still clap and say, way to go. You're trying so hard. That's awesome. Even if you miss the ball, that's amazing. You're going for it, you know? And so that concept should be sticking with athletes as they move forward um, or kind of, you know, using a different word, like it's a gift of learning, whatever that is. So Yes, absolutely. You know, professional athletes don't want to hear this stuff, but we're talking about kids and building these blocks up to where we want them to get to. Okay. So some tips for introducing um, kids to recreational sport. So a number one thing is a positive association. Um, I think even if a kid comes and they might not learn something for a week, if they have a positive association to the sport or to squash, they will come back and you will get a second chance at trying to teach them something. Um, you know, a lot of times when we introduce people to sport or to any kind of sit new situation, people are don't know what to expect. And I think for little kids, you know, where I work at the badminton and racket club, we have a lot of little people. And if parents could just think about this in the sense of like, tell them what the, what the facility looks like, take them to the facility prior to show them rackets, show them glasses, balls, let them start to understand what they're about to get engaged with because it won't become such a scary thing. And sometimes kids when they're little have a hard time you know, with sounds and things like that. But if you get them used to what's going to happen, it will be a lot easier for them to do that transition into the first week or they won't have to be so worried. They can actually go in and start making some friends. Um, the other pieces is when, when kids are getting introduced to sport, they have worries. Well, what if I'm not very good? What if I'm this? And, and the idea is to have the conversations with, if you're a coach with the parents or a coach with the kids. Like start talking about it right away. Um, and that I think is a really helpful tool because we do have kids at this stage that are, you know, nervous and things like that. The other thing is a sense of belonging and social. So if kids have fun together and make sure they're grouped together, because that, I think that's huge. Um, I don't know, Lauren, do you have any feedback on that stuff? Like, cause I think you're kind of, you've been involved in a lot of these kind of pieces over the years. No, I think that's good. Um, yeah. I've never thought about the, the, <laughs> I mean, it makes sense, especially for when the really small, the younger kids about, um, bringing them in and like having them see squash or look at everything. Cause I would have never thought about that. Usually people are just dropping their kids off in day one and saying, go for it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so getting them familiar with the space or whatnot, usually they belong to the club. So it's easy for them to, to immerse themselves in that area. Um, totally. Yeah. And it's interesting. Like, even though this is a recreational 
thing. And this is getting people engaged. Actually, a lot of um, sports psychology clients over the years have come and they're worried about a new facility where they're going to be and setting those expectations. So you can take some of these concepts and, you know, that's when people go internationally, set expectations of what it's going to be like. It's the same concept. So we're building this very early on. And the other thing is feeling competent. Okay, no problem. You know, you might miss the ball. Give give kids a little bit of that competence feeling and meaning like also when you're introducing kids to sport, take them outside of that that window of learning and get them to do learning outside of it. So they feel like they can come back and help and feel like they're a little bit better. Okay. Um, here we go. Oh, did I miss one here? One sec. Sorry. So competitive sport. So as, as kids get into competitive sport, we have to still continue to find ways for it to be fun. Um, Otherwise, the hard work becomes really, really, really tough, and it's always a grind. So if you can always add little lights of fun into it, it'll really keep kids for the long term. So again, character values, focus on the process, um, talking about performance values, talking about moral, how do we get people to stay engaged? And when we're thinking about the character values, it's something that high performers can actually control. And when you come back to that, they'll always remember those pieces. Um, empowering an athlete to have a voice and advocate for themselves. So things like this, as we get into the older stages, um, you know, coaches who are coaching their kids, you say, what can I, how can I help you um, between games? How can I help you after games, before games? You know, having these kinds of conversations so that you're training the kid to have the conversations with you early on, and then they will start to have that, that feedback with you. Um, and then again, if there's an issue within a group, it's going to, you're training your kid to be able to come to you first instead of the parent. And, you know, as coaches, it's really important that, okay, thank you so much parents for telling me there's an issue. Now, can you have your kid come and talk to me? Because I want that relationship to be with them. Um, and that's a big one and it's a tough one. And I'm sure you at Squash Ontario also deal with that on a weekly basis. Um, so it's an important piece to think about. Okay. So Lauren, we talked a little bit about this earlier, identifying pressure bubbles. So when you see, um, your kids melting down and it starts to become stressful instead of very anxious kind of behavior, you want to start dealing with that behavior right away instead of just waiting and letting it mount and get bigger. Okay. And again, uh, normalize failure and mistakes. Um, and so things like would be really helpful from a sports psychology context. And this would be for coaches with kids and also coaches to parents. So these conversations become much more structured and quick. So um, what did you do well? So say it's after a tournament or a practice, what did you do well? What do you feel needs improvement? And how are you going to make that change going forward? And how might you practice that? So what it does is it really takes those um, failure mistakes and turns them into learning. Okay. Okay. How to talk sports with kids. Positive. Positive compliments are always going to open the door. So this was to parents, but this can also be very, very um, important to coaches as well. So positive conversations, positive feedback. I really liked what you did here. Um, I liked how you put yourself out there, even though it was a really tough match, whatever it was. Um, so ask questions about the controllables and the values. So when someone comes up to a kid and says, did you win? That means that that is your value that you're asking for from the kid. And that's how they will pick up that that's how they measure themselves if they won or not. And so when we talk about controllables and values, so what was your, what was your like greatest point? What was, your, what was your highlight of that match? What were you proud of? Um, how will you move forward? Like, how will you play this person again in the future? So those are going to be big, big questions that you want to always be thinking about in your own head, how do I want them to conceptualize matches? Well, what if um, a kid has just started competition? If you ask them if they won, that's a pretty tough, 
conversation to have. Um, again, this whole piece is how can I support you? So lots of very, very funny stories, you know, that I've had over the years where kids come in and be like, my parents, they do this and it drives me insane. Well, kids, you can't actually expect your parents to be mind readers and parents, you can't expect that from your kid. And it's the same concept with coaches. So asking them very specifically, how can I support you is a really important piece. So before, during, after. So um, Mars, with that, like, obviously you talked a lot about the coaches saying, how can I support you before, during, after a match, mm -hmm. which is great because I think so many kids want different things. Um, I think some kids want to talk a lot more about the match before it goes. And I know that there's in the past, there have been players who are like, I don't want a lot of information in between games. I don't want seven pointers. I want you to give me two and I'd rather let's talk about it before the match. And then there's some kids who probably need you to talk to them in between games the whole time just just to like keep their nerves down or whatever. Mm -hmm. Every person's going to be different. But um, so that is super important, I think, for a coach to figure out with their athletes, which um, I mean, hopefully most people will listen to this and figure, figure that out. But from a parent standpoint, like, is there any value or what do you do? Because I feel like there's almost like a coach needs to ask, what do you need me to do before, during, after? But mm -hmm. it's almost like, what do you need your parents to do before, during, after? Right. And that's going to be something that's going to be coach led if they see that that is seems to be a sticking point. Now, I am a big believer in kids' parents should always be there. They pay, they um mm -hmm. they they do all these, you know, things for their kids, but um it's having these conversations. If a kid says, "I just don't want my parents there." I don't really agree with That's that. That's not an option. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it's really optional in my mind. So it's like, how do you, you know what? If the kid says, I actually don't like the cheering. Do you mind just sitting and watching? Awesome. That's great. Mm -hmm. But that's got to be that conversation. And um, I think that a really helpful tool is, is when parents start to ask those, teach parents to ask those questions or have a conversation within clinic to say, hey, have a chat with your parent and have a really kind and loving thing. Your parents love you. They want to see you do, excuse me, well. And, but that conversation is this conversation that we're having. You also need to have with your parents, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, and if, if the kid's nervous, like sometimes they are just say whatever to their parents or the parents maybe don't want to hear it from the kid. Like, you're not going to tell me I can't cheer for you, blah, blah, blah. But if they got it from a coach, maybe they would take that on board like Absolutely. I would assume that conversation is easier to have it at the beginning of a season. Like, Hey, I talked to little Timmy. He says he actually doesn't love when people cheer for him. Like right. that's just a heads up between you and I, he told me that. Yeah. And I think that the big pieces is that instead of the coach actually relaying all that information, it's the coach also saying, Hey, you got to have this conversation with your parents. Yeah. And, you know, maybe doing what you need support from me and your parents and then saying, okay, can everyone go back home and talk to your parents? Cause again, it's this whole piece about voice and about advocating for themselves. So that's, that's going to be a big one. And maybe coaches let parents know that that's something, a topic that you're going to talk about in your clinics um, leading up to it. So, yeah, I think that that's just a big, a big piece um, of this puzzle. Marcy, we, we had a discussion with um, some swimming coaches earlier this summer mm -hmm. uh, and we got to a similar topic like this, just about how to keep, how to keep girls specifically engaged. Mm -hmm. uh, and they talked about how they, in their specific swimming program, they have a preceding preseason meeting every single year um, with the parents and the athletes, like everyone is there and they set expectations and they, they talk about the role of the parent. Um, so everyone agrees at the beginning of the season. Um, but they also said that parents should come in like their grandparents. So, so picture your grandparent watching your sport. How, how do you think they would react? And that's, um, if the parent's getting a little too involved, try and be a grandparent. Yeah. I mean, I think what parents also really need to understand is, is kids feel you, they see you, um, and they copy what you do. And if you have a big emotional expression, well, then they feel it's important. So that's a big piece for um, 
you know, it's, it's a, it's a tough spot. And sometimes the, the coaches do have trouble having those conversations, but it definitely is a helpful one. And it can be broached in a very gentle, soft way, but I think it's a, it's an important piece because as we're learning, parents have a massive influence on their kids. They, they see their kids in and out and they really do at the end of the day, parents love their kids so much that they just want to help them more than anything. Right. So it's almost like they care so too much that they don't even know how to deal with it. Right. So, but again, we want to normalize, you know, losing and things like that so that we can actually get our kids to become resilient and learn. So the last one is, is no over celebrating for winning coaches and parents alike. Like you've got to know that there are going to be ups and downs in a kid's, um, in a, in a kid's trajectory. So we've got to know that we've got to stay solid through both. And if we are over celebrating after winning then we're, again, we're reinforcing the value that it's all about winning and all about winning. Well, we need kids to, we need kids to stay in sport. Therefore, yes, there is a winner and a loser. We're not denying that, but remember you got to kind of keep it more even in order for us to keep there's only one winner. So there, and there's like a million kids playing in the rest of the draw. So we have to remember that we need to keep that voice kind of balanced. All right. Um, so that's, that's kind of the end of everything. I don't know if you girls have any further questions or conversations. Go for I'll, it. I'll jump in here. Um, so just sort of providing a comment here, we've had a couple recent webinars or pre-recorded sessions like this, mm -hmm. um, all to deal with high performance and um, with a wide variety of coaches. And it's really cool to think that they actually all started with similar concepts to this. So the sports psychology piece in when you're talking about technical, tactical, physical, everything, it all starts with these building blocks that you touched on. Uh, they all, everyone started with fun. Everyone started with building a community, the social aspect. It's, um, it's actually shocking how important all of these building blocks are because you, if you don't have this base, you will fall apart. Um, so I, it, it's interesting. Yeah. It's awesome that we have you in the squash community so that, so that we can sort of put some science to, to this topic. Um, but everything starts here. Yeah, I think that it's it's a really important piece that we want to build people and and skill sets that can stand the test of time and wins and losses and things like that. Like, I don't know, Lauren, like you have a kind of a cool perspective. You played on the Cornell squash team. Obviously, you guys worked hard, you trained hard, you were doing school, but was fun just as important in that whole realm of things? Yeah, definitely. I think um I mean, the fun is probably more like at the practice. I mean, I wouldn't say like match days where, I mean, we did find a way to go into it with fun, but it's obviously high pressure, high intensity, which is why I watch these junior kids and I'm like, this is, it's such a, it's such a tough sport being an individual athlete. So they really need to learn how to cope with that pressure if they want to continue on playing whether it's pro whether it's in college it's it doesn't necessarily get easier <laughs> right yeah. well yeah and it's if we can build these skill sets and these character traits early on they will be able to withstand more intensity and more pressure yeah. and keep it in that you know you identify the balance and it's really important that you keep all those pieces and yeah. you know a, a kind of a cool side note is is you know we have had a couple of kids over the years where they've really struggled with their school groups while squash became their safe place. Mm -hmm. And so because they had their, you know, as they're growing up, their soccer, their squash, their school friends, their, you know, camp friends with all of that, it becomes a really, really safe system for people. And it allows them to kind of have perspective and also when you have that fun and that sense of belonging, it also harbors you from the tough stuff in other areas. And it's always going to switch. And I think in today's world, there's so much more pressure that it's important to have these little, little groups to help you stay balanced. Mm -hmm. So. And anyway. Mar Marcy, um, so we know that you, um, you do take on private clients. 
Yep. Um, so can you walk us through just the types of topics that you work with clients on? Um, so if it's specific to the, the kind of stuff that you talked about in this presentation, or if, if, you know, a coach or a parent, um, you know, wants to use this as a springboard to deeper, deeper topics, what are the types of things that you work with? So topics can range for coaches, can range for parents, can range for kids, could range for someone in a different performance domain than just squash, like all different sporting or performance-based things. So, you know, things like focus, motivation, emotional regulation, performance, anxiety, um, all of those topics, and there's lots of subtopics underneath them, goal setting, are all pieces. Oh, mistake management would be one of them. So they're all different pieces. And a lot of times people will come with what's going on and you kind of look at what is the major topic that they need to deal with first and how do they build skills? So the big pieces is in in performance and sports psychology is that you teach people skill sets in order to deal with what they're going through. So they leave with a very tangible thing that they can use. So I always call them, it's like you want to give someone a tool belt and then all the different situations that come up, you pull the different tools out at different times. Um, again, a previous session that we had with another coach, uh, he spoke about how he um, recognizes when he reaches the point that he, he doesn't have the skill set to help an athlete through something and then separate it into like the technical, the tactical, the physical, the, the psychological. Um, and he said he was lucky because they had a sports psych team. So, um, if, so it's pretty awesome. We have you who is in the squash community, you know, and understand squash, you're highly involved in it. Um, and you could be the sports psych team for sports, for squash. Um, so if anyone does have um, something that they want to talk to you about, uh, your information is here. Um, and we're pretty lucky to have you in our squash world. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me girls and thanks for your input and I'm throwing out questions along the way. No problem. Okay. Thank you, Marcy.